All right, good Saturday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. It is a quiet evening in the Mid-South. We don't have a lot going on for tonight. It's a pretty beautiful evening out there, minus, of course, the humidity, as that's going to be sticking around for most of the area throughout the rest of the evening and to the next couple of days. But we do have some changes taking place, it looks like, as we get into the next couple of days. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. If you are just tuning in and joining us, especially on Periscope and Twitter. Please give us an idea as to where you are, the location, and also a little bit more about where exactly you're typing in from from tonight. We'd love to know your location on there and a little bit more about where our guests and viewers are talking to us from for tonight. So please let us know more about that. If you've never tuned in here before, welcome to the show, first of all. And secondly, make certain you're oriented with everything. My email address in the blue bar right above my head in the phone looking icon up there. Uh, forecast information available here. Information in the red bar scrolling on past, which you can also see, again, the email address down there, austin.onic at wreg.com. And again, website available at wreg.com slash weather uh, for more information. We're trying to keep an eye on what's going on again with the tropics. We'll have more on that coming up in just a little bit. Plus, if you have not seen, again, information for September's National Preparedness Month, We'd love to bring you along and give you some more information on that. We'll have a couple of suggestions for you coming up here in just a little while, so stay tuned for that to help you get ready. We've talked about earthquakes and wildfires and hurricanes. Uh, there's been terrorist attacks in the news. Any of that could happen, again, in the Mid-South area, severe weather purposes and things like that. So knowing what to do beforehand is a better plan than what, trying to wing it during a disaster. So please keep that in mind if you want to tune in and find out more about that. Currently in the Mid-South area, again, we don't really have much of anything going on. Radar is a complete and total clean sweep, with the exception of a few scattered showers down across northwestern parts of Alabama. Those were thunderstorms for a period of time, but really there are not much more than that at this point and beyond that we just don't really have a lot of anything going on and not really realistically expecting to see too much of anything into the rest of the evening. So things are very quiet and very dry across much of the area for tonight. Thanks to everybody for joining us on uh, Facebook at this time, and all six or seven of you tuning in and tuning out on Periscope and Twitter for right now. If you'd like to see more about our weather bug cameras, they're available across the Mid-South area, and you can see what's going on all over the place, and they're available at wreg.com slash webcams for more. Temperatures in the Mid-South as of about just about 8.30 and just afterwards mainly in the mid to upper 70s to the lower to mid 80s. Warmest spot that we could find for right now 84 degrees at Memphis International Airport with an east wind at about 6 miles per hour. Temperatures across northwest Mississippi back in the mid to upper 70s, lower to mid 80s to upper 70s across northeast Arkansas and back in the lower 80s to upper 70s across eastern or parts of the viewing area in west Tennessee. So some pretty quiet numbers. It's warm, but it's not overly hot. Now that the sun's gone down, things are looking pretty nice across much of the area. Good news in the tropics. We have one less storm to worry about. The National Hurricane Center has issued its final advisory on what was Hurricane Jose, now not even a tropical storm, just a basic washout of a little bit of activity going on up into that location. There's just really not that much left of Jose. That little bit of clouds that you see between Maria and Lee, that's about all that we've got left over from that once fairly powerful storm. Now, Maria is still a Category 3 hurricane, some major hurricane with winds of 115 miles an hour. Lee is a tropical storm and is sitting way out into the Atlantic, well to the east of Bermuda. Winds of about 45 miles per hour. It's a minimal but strengthening tropical storm, and Lee could become a hurricane in the course of the next couple of days. If it does, it might wander back toward Bermuda briefly but it's not expected to cause that much of a problem, and it looks like it will become a hurricane possibly by about Tuesday afternoon. But again, no threat to Bermuda at this time or the East Coast states. Maria, on the other hand, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting as we see again the cone of the forecast moving a little bit closer to the East Coast of the United States, specifically the Outer Banks and into and around the area of Chesapeake Bay. That's where we're seeing again uh, some concern out of this storm as it gets 
gets a little bit closer to the United States. Now, this is not a direct hit. The storm could go anywhere in this area. So it could curve out toward Bermuda. It could curve over westerly toward the United States. Hopefully it stays on that dotted line with the letters in the middle, M for major, H for hurricane, and again stays right on that track. That's the most likely average of those travel areas for right now. But if you're heading anywhere north of South Carolina or south of the Delmarva Peninsula in the next couple of days, I would watch this very carefully to be on the safe side out of this. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on Facebook. Feel free to share our netcast around so everybody knows what's going on in and around the Mid-South area. Currently, again, just not that much happening. We do have a cold front approaching, but not much is expected to come out of this as high pressure remains in control over most of the East Coast. And that's doing a very good job of keeping things very warm and muggy where we are. Better chances of showers and thunderstorms from the Rio Grande all the way up to the western Great Lakes. Would be nice if we got some of that, but unfortunately it doesn't look like too much is going to be reaching us thanks in part to that area of high pressure blocking things in the Mid-South. So as of right now, as we've said for the last very numerous previous evenings, uh, the National Weather Service at this time has nothing to show in the way of major problems in the Mid-South, so we have little, if anything, taking place in the way of hazardous weather anytime soon. Seven-day forecast, again, looks like this. It is going to be warm and muggy out there throughout the next several days. But as we go toward the end of the week, and here's the good news, things are looking a little bit better as we go toward around the area of Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That's where we finally start to see a downturn in the temperatures. Haven't seen that in quite some time. Be nice to take a look at some nicer numbers out there. So by next weekend, mid-70s, a couple of computer models have us going into the upper 60s for highs by next weekend. So yes, we are starting to get closer to a fall-like temperature uh, period of time. It's just taking a little while to get there. And hopefully it'll stay that way for a while. But as of right now, still looking at some very warm conditions across the Mid-South. Don't forget about Go Jim Go. That's going to be starting pretty soon as we get into the course of the next couple of days. Jim would love to have some encouragement on there. So send him an email, drop by our website, or click to donate for Le Bonner Children's Hospital. A great opportunity to support a great cause in the Mid-South. And you can find out more by going to wrag.com slash weather and clicking on the Go Jim Go logo. All right, for the next couple of weeks, the National Weather Service is going to be teaching spotter training courses. These are not chase courses. That is something else entirely where you should learn that by professional experts and never do that on your own without knowing what to do, where to go, stuff like that. This is an opportunity for you to help out your community by using your eyes, your ears, and your brain. You watch for severe weather. You call the National Weather Service or you by phone or by amateur radio if you have a license or you post it online. Again, good opportunity to help your community when it needs it the most. And the first couple of meetings will be coming up this next week on Tuesday, Lafayette County at the Fire Department Central Station in Oxford, Mississippi. On Thursday, in Quitman County at Marks Community House, 200 Pecan Street in Marks, Mississippi, or Pecan, depending on how you pronounce that. Several other meetings coming up over the course of the next several days. Date, time, location, and contact information all available on this web page and it's very easy to get to. If you don't see one on here nearby, you consider a little bit of travel. If you've never done this before, it's a great opportunity for you to learn about what to look for when severe weather hits. If you'd like to know even more but don't know who to contact, you can use this email address at sr-meg.wx at noaa.gov and the best opportunity to really call in would be to talk to the National Weather Service directly and that's available at Walnut Grove Road on uh, the National Weather Service. Again, phone number is 544-0399. So how do you get to this information? Easy. You go to weather.gov, the homepage of the National Weather Service. You scroll down on the map and then you click on the Mid-South area and that will take you directly to the National Weather Service. Zoom in to this area right here, click on Become a Storm Spotter and boom, there's all the information available for you, all ready to go. Tons of information available if you'd like to see more about that for volunteering. That's just one way to get ready. New opportunities exist all over the place for training, social media, uh, getting opportunities for training at various locations, getting your kids ready to go. This is National Preparedness Month, 
And the best thing you can do at this point in time is to be ready before something happens. We usually don't get hurricanes, but we can get leftover tropical storms pretty easily, uh, heat waves, health issues, uh, helping on social media to f sort out fact from fiction. It's all available at ready.gov if you'd like to know more about how to get ready for stuff like that. One great way to do it, and this is one that I cannot recommend more highly, uh, this available from Shelby County Preparedness at readyshelby.org. It's, com it's uh, Community Emergency Response Team Training. It is a great way to get ready for disasters. They teach you what to look for before, during, and after disasters. Disasters, disaster psychology, uh, search and rescue operations, communication, uh, neighborhood relations, getting information out about uh, what needs to go where. Uh, remember, again, the best websites that you have will say that you need to have enough supplies to be on your own for about three to four, maybe five days after a disaster. And we can get any of that around here, uh, anything the way of earthquakes, leftover hurricanes, big events of severe weather, uh, anything that could cause problems and disruption of communication, now is the time to get ready for that, and this can really help you do it. Search a little time intensive, but it is definitely well worth it. And there are other things you can do, including getting, commu getting a communication ready to go just to be on the safe side. If you have never done anything like this, now's the time to do it. We're not trying to scare anybody, but this is a great time to learn more about what you can do to help out when it comes to things like this. Again, if you have the opportunity to get ready, uh, for some example, getting communications ready to go before anything happens. Knowing uh, that you have an out-of-town contact, this is something that is very handy. If you can't contact your family or your friends locally, you should have an out-of-town contact so that you can contact them check in there and then they can relay the information back and forth. Mine and our families is Tom Alford, our, my father-in-law in Knoxville, Tennessee. So we have the opportunity to check in there and that's a good opportunity for you to get planned ahead for these things just to be on the safe side. If you'd like to know more, there's tons of information available and all you have to do is go to my Facebook page at facebook.com slash austinonicwreg. Uh, also on my Periscope page, which was supposed to be live but isn't for some reason. Sorry about that. And also more information on my Twitter page at twitter.com slash aonic underscore wreg3. So tons of information available there. Again, now is the time to really start thinking about these things. And if you haven't done it yet, definitely a good idea to think about that as much as possible to make certain you are ready to go when things like this happen. It's all about. It's not about being scared, but it's about being prepared. That's the main thing to think about in situations like this. So keep that in mind when you talk to your kids, when you talk to your boss at work, when you talk to your place of worship. You can help get people ready for the unforeseen emergencies and get ready for activity that might happen. That's the best way to do it now instead of during when things are going wrong. So something to think about very heavily there. Tune in for more of my forecast on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations throughout the rest of the weekend. And again, on Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. And I'll be back with Bob and Josh bright and early on Monday morning on AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio. That'll wrap it up for this edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. We'll have more coming up tonight. Kristen Holloway on the news desk. Mike Sadie has more on sports. A busy day in sports coming up in just a little while. And of course, I'll have an update on your midweekend forecast on News Channel 3 at 10. Thanks for joining us tonight. More coming up with News Channel 3 on air and online throughout the rest of the weekend.